My mother's family were in the theatre. My, my grandfather was the stage director, stage designer of the St. Martin's Theatre. My father was a German refugee and he wanted to be an actor but he wasn't allowed to be but he became an actor at the age of 50 on television and, and film. He did a film about Disraeli and he did with Ian McShane. In one film he played Hitler. His name was William, uh, William Merrow. Live television I did once I think and it's the most terrifying experience when you think there are possibly millions of people watching this. And you go, uh. I was going to do all the major Shakespeare roles and, and just be a great theatre Shakespearean actress. Obviously other people had other ideas. And I got some wonderful parts. I mean, really fantastic parts on the BBC when they were doing really good shows. I, I did, um, we did a film of 1984, the George Orwell book. And then I did all the other shows which became, which were done on film, like The Saint and Danger Man and, um, oh gosh, you name it, I was in it. I suppose The Lion in Winter was unforgettable. It really was. It was an extraordinary experience. And, and Peter said to me at the time, Peter O'Toole, he said, you may never work on a film as, as cohesive and happy as this. And it was such a happy film. I mean, we all got along so well. And that doesn't often happen on films, or it doesn't always happen on films, let's put it that way. Um, he said, you may never have another experience quite like this. And he was right. I, I never have had quite the same sort of experience. What happens now? I have no idea. We were all the sort of young people in the film, as it were. Peter O'Toole was very young, as, as it happens. He was only 35 when he did that film. But he bulked up and, and made himself look a lot older. And Anthony Hopkins' first film, Timothy Dalton's first film, and we were all very nervous of meeting uh, Catherine, and um, it was fantastic, and we all took to her, and she took to us, and she was very helpful, but she would take no prisoners, so that if, uh, I mean, God forbid you should come on the set without knowing your lines, that would be a no, absolute no-no. Um, but if you couldn't get something quite right, then, you know, she was always helpful and suggest made suggestions and so on. And, um, but if she felt that you weren't pulling your weight in, as an actor in the scene with you, she'd just take it away from you. Which is fine! What we expect? Well, even. That's a rare, fair feature, even teeth. She smiled to excess, but she chewed with real distinction. And you hate her even now? No, but I did. He put her in my place, you see. And that was very hard. Yes, I didn't even know what the Golden Globes were at the time. I was in, in Australia doing another film. But someone said, oh, Jane, you've been nominated for a Golden Globe. And I said, oh, lovely, what's that? You know, it's opened a lot of doors for me, that film. <laughs> well, the film really was... Well, it wasn't bad, but it was really over-the-top sort of horror. And there was another film that came out at the same time called In the Heat of the Night. And I thought, well, maybe they'll get the, the title smuddled out. I think I was in that one. This is when I was being a bit snobby. But actually, it was a, it was a wonderful experience. I had such a good time on it because I was playing such an over-the-top character. Really. <laughs> and it was, we did it in February, it was very cold and we were supposed to be burning up with the heat, you know, so we were smothered all the time in glycerin because I was look, supposed to look like glistening sweat at the time. So we were cold and sort of wet, really, although we were supposed to be hot and, and um, but it gave me an opportunity to work with Peter Cushing, who was a delightful man, charming, charming man, and uh, Christopher Lee, who was not as not as charming as, as as Peter. I like Christopher, but he's he's a little bit more formal, and and you don't get you don't get sort of too close to him. Whereas Peter was a very engaging person, and uh, we had you know I worked with the the director who was Ter Terence uh, Fisher, who was one of the classic directors. I'm waiting for my fiance. He should be here in a moment. Another a very good producer, a sort of a, a steady hammer producer, Aida Young. She was one of the sort of classic producers, so she really pulled the production tightly together. Um, and we had a good time. 
I played a rather less Your interesting life. part, although I was played a, a blind girl. And that part of it was interesting, I found that, but I was really too goody-goody to be true otherwise. But I was supposed to be blind, and, and Harry Reese had this sort of meaty part, playing the daughter of Jack the Ripper. But she and I had a lot of laughs together. <laughs> Especially when we were supposed to be in St Paul's Whispering Gallery. And uh, we, we just, yes, we had a good time. I think we, they recreated the gallery on set because we weren't allowed to film up there. Are you there yet, Anna? Well, I didn't really know it. I was part of cult history till I went to one of these cult festivals, which was a great lark. I mean, I, it was really, really good. And it was obviously quite a big one because they had, you know, quite big names there. They brought over the, some of the American actresses, or actors, I should say, from the x Files. And um, our UFO was considered a culture, and so I was asked to go. And it was good fun, and I, liked it. I enjoyed the festival. Um, and then UFO became a sort of cult film in Italy. It was the one of, there was their biggest cult film, so they asked me to go down there and to sort of do a signing tour or what have you, and appear at their festival. And um, they were just devoted to it. These two, they, they had, I mean, they'd spent so much time and money just devoting themselves. And unfortunately, both the big stars of the show died. So it's very difficult to hang, um, you know, a sort of fan festival around the two actors that are gone. So, but it, it, I enjoyed it. But I didn't enjoy it at the time as much. I mean, I did enjoy playing the part. So again, I played a raunchy journalist, I think. <laughs> yes, I come on to him, don't I, a bit. He was a sweet man, lovely man, Ed. Um, right. I've, I've worked with some really nice actors. I haven't worked with many that have been, you know, not fun and not, not happy to be with and didn't take themselves too seriously. I think that's a, the thing about acting and actors. You must never take yourself too seriously because really and truly, you're only as good as your last part. Star. Right. Thank you, number six. What for? for letting me practice my mind-reading act on you. Am I aware of my cult status? No, I'm not. Insight? Yes, well, I, I don't believe in such things myself, but um, you were supposed to be able to read each other's minds. But I did, as I said, I had this big calling card. So I, I was with an agency called the William Morris Agency, which is a big agency then. Um, and um, they just got me tons of work, which was great. Um, but it was mainly television, which I would like to have done more films, but I bumped into an actor called Steve Forrest somewhere in Hollywood and I said, he said, what are you doing out here? And I said, well, I live here now because my husband's American. And he said, oh, how are you getting in much work? And I said, no, yes, but not the kind of work I want to be doing. And he said, well, there's not much call for princesses out here. <laughs> okay, I got that message. <laughs> but um, anyway, it's true. You know, it, it, it is not, they don't, weren't doing much what I would call period work. Uh, there's a lot more now with all the big sort of, you know, films like Thor and, you know, all the fantasy films. Yeah. So, you know, it might have been better if my timing wasn't quite right. But I had a good time out there and I worked with, again, very good, nice people. And um, Bill Bixby, who did um, the incredible, original Incredible Help, lovely man. And Tom Selleck, who I adored, really liked him. Now, where I'm, I'm doing the, my own films, where I'm working with young people who are uh, studying at the local university, which has a very good um, uh, media department, etc. It's like going backwards to the early days when everybody was enthusiastic, you knew everyone on the crew, and, and it's, so I've gone in backwards in that way, which is great. And then I went back to Idaho and I met a, I joined a group of media people there, there's a group you know, people who really are interested in, in media and want to progress it, especially in Idaho, which is difficult because they don't have any tax breaks, which all the other states do for filming. Um, but they do have an Idaho um, pr a production entity in the government, local government, and you can get grants from them. And I met a woman there who said we can get a grant probably from them. So we did. We got a, a small grant from them and decided to do the Telltale Heart which I enjoyed. I wrote, I wrote it or adapted it. I don't say I wrote it because Edgar Allan Poe wrote it. And, um, and th so we made the film of it. But I got quite involved with that Idaho group in, in, um, 
media group out there and it's really nice because you know it's like going back to being a, a reasonably big fish in a small pond and, and I like that, I enjoy it. And the, the kids that I worked with, a lot of them are working in local television as technicians or cameramen or whatever. The young director um, of the yellow, yellow Wallpaper has his own um, special effects company and he'd done some special effects for the uh, Grammys. I would love to do some more acting um, and, and I will find other parts for myself in these and if somebody comes along with something on you know television here or wherever, great. Otherwise I'm going to be doing more writing. I wrote my first screenplay this last this year, finished it, and I started sending it out to festivals, you know, and I won an award at one festival. I, my big motto is don't look back. I do from time to time. I mean, I've made mistakes and, you know, head issues and blah, blah, blah and all of that, but there is absolutely no point in looking back on all of that. You have to keep looking now is best of all and forward and keep you know planning and using your using your abilities everybody has some talent Zubfest I think you're doing a fantastic job I really really do keep going keep the faith keep pushing and and I'm sure you'll you'll embed yourselves into becoming a long and, and successful festival